July 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 3 through 5 of the Old Testament. Solomon began building the Lord's temple in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David. This was the place that David prepared at the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. He began building on the second day of the second month of the fourth year of his reign. Solomon laid the foundation for God's temple. Its length, determined according to the old standard of measure, was 90 feet and its width 30 feet. The porch in front of the main hall was 30 feet long, corresponding to the width of the temple, and its height was 30 feet. He plated the inside with pure gold. He paneled the main hall with boards made from evergreen trees and plated it with fine gold decorated with palm trees and chains. He decorated the temple with precious stones. The gold he used came from Parvaim. He overlaid the temple's rafters, thresholds, walls, and doors with gold. He carved decorative cherubim on the walls. He made the most holy place. Its length was 30 feet, corresponding to the width of the temple, and its width 30 feet. He plated it with 600 talents of fine gold. The gold nails weighed 50 shekels. He also plated the upper areas with gold. In the most holy place, he made two images of cherubim and plated them with gold. The combined wingspan of the cherubs was 30 feet. One of the first cherub's wings was seven and one half feet long and touched one wall of the temple. Its other wing was also seven and one half feet long and touched one of the second cherub's wings. Likewise, one of the second cherub's wings was seven and one half feet long and touched the other wall of the temple. Its other wing was also seven and one half feet long and touched one of the first cherub's wings. The combined wingspan of these cherubim was 30 feet. They stood upright, facing inward. He made the curtain out of violet, purple, crimson, and white fabrics and embroidered on it decorative cherubim. In front of the temple, he made two pillars, which had a combined length of 52 and a half feet, with each having a plated capital seven and one half feet high. He made ornamental chains and put them on top of the pillars. He also made 100 pomegranate shaped ornaments and arranged them within the chains. He set up the pillars in front of the temple, one on the right side and the other on the left. He named the one on the right Jachin and the one on the left, Boaz. He made a bronze altar 30 feet long and 30 feet wide and 15 feet high. He also made the big bronze basin called the sea. It measured 15 feet from rim to rim, was circular in shape and stood seven and one half feet high. Its circumference was 45 feet. Images of bowls were under it all the way around. 10 every 18 inches all the way around. The bowls were in two rows and had been cast with the sea. The sea stood on top of 12 bowls, three faced northward, three westward, three southward, and three eastward. The sea was placed on top of them and they all faced outward. It was four fingers thick and its rim was like that of a cup shaped like a lily blossom. It could hold 18,000 gallons. He made ten washing basins. He put five on the south side and five on the north side. In them, they rinsed the items used for burnt sacrifices. The priest washed in the sea. He made ten gold lampstands according to the specifications and put them in the temple, five on the right and five on the left. He made ten tables and set them in the temple, five on the right and five on the left. He also made 100 gold bowls. He made the courtyard of the priest and the large enclosure and its doors. He plated their doors with bronze. He put the sea on the south side in the southeast corner. Hiram Abai made the pots, shovels, and bowls. He finished all the work on God's temple he had been assigned by King Solomon. He made the two pillars, the two bowl-shaped tops of the pillars, the lattice work for the bowl shaped tops of the two pillars, the 400 pomegranate shaped ornaments for the lattice work of the two pillars, 
each latticework had two rows of these ornaments at the bowl-shaped top of the pillar. The ten movable stands with their ten basins, the big bronze basin called the sea with its twelve bowls underneath, and the pots, shovels, and meat forks. All the items King Solomon assigned Hiram Abai to make for the Lord's temple were made from polished bronze. The king had them cast in earthen foundries in the region of the Jordan, between Sekoth and Zarethan. Solomon made so many of these items, they did not weigh the bronze. Solomon also made these items for God's temple, the gold altar, the tables on which the bread of the presence was kept, the pure gold lampstands and their lamps which burned as specified at the entrance to the inner sanctuary, the pure gold flower-shaped ornaments, lamps, and tongs, the pure gold trimming shears, basins, pans, and censers, and the gold door sockets for the inner sanctuary, the most holy place, and for the doors of the main hall of the temple. When Solomon had finished constructing the Lord's temple, he put the holy items that belonged to his father David, the silver, gold, and all the other articles in the treasuries of God's temple. Then Solomon convened Israel's leaders, all the leaders of the Israelite tribes and families in Jerusalem, so they could witness the transferal of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, that is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled before the king during the festival in the seventh month. When all Israel's leaders had arrived, the Levites lifted the Ark. The priests and Levites carried the Ark the tent where God appeared to his people, and all the holy items in the tent. Now King Solomon and all the Israelites who had assembled with him went on ahead of the ark and sacrificed more sheep and cattle than could be counted or numbered. The priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its assigned place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, in the most holy place under the wings of the cherubs. The cherubs were extended over the place where the ark sat. The cherubs overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles were so long, their ends extending out from the ark were visible from in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from beyond that point. They have remained there to this very day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets Moses had placed there in Horeb. It was there that the Lord made an agreement with the Israelites after he brought them out of the land of Egypt. The priests left the holy place. All the priests who participated had consecrated themselves, no matter which division they represented. All the Levites who were musicians, including Asaph, Heman, Jeduthun, and their sons and relatives, wore linen. They played cymbals and stringed instruments as they stood east of the altar. They were accompanied by a hundred and twenty priests who blew trumpets. The trumpeters and musicians played together, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they loudly praised the Lord, singing, Certainly He is good. Certainly His loyal love endures. Then a cloud filled the Lord's temple. The priests could not carry out their duties because of the cloud. The Lord's splendor filled God's temple. God, I keep coming back to the cherubim, the, the big ones <laughs> that are in Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple, of course, is, is more lavish and, and grandiose and glorious uh, than the temporary tabernacle uh, that was originally built. But Solomon's added a few additional features on top of pretty much covering everything in gold. Um, we see more lampstands, we see uh, more showbreads, we see uh, these, this addition of these two gigantic cherubim. I can't even imagine. In fact, I just took a measuring stick and measured out how big they would actually be. They wouldn't fit into my house. Um, about 15 feet by 15 feet wide, approximately. That's gigantic. And there was two of them. And their wingspan uh, protected the Ark of the Covenant. And just that imagery in my head is just overwhelming to me. So they just kind of stuck in my heart. And as I started researching more about them, the fact that they were made out of olive wood 
I also find really fascinating, you know, all of the Old Testament looks towards the coming of your son. There is acknowledgement throughout all of Old Testament scripture that there is going to be a coming Christ. And we see that over and over and over again in the Old Testament through so many different features. Uh, but this seems like it's another one, the fact that the cherubim were made out of olive wood. And we know in Romans, Romans uh, chapter 11, where you talk about the two different types of olive, olive wood. You talk about the Jews being one type of olive wood, and you talk about the Gentiles being one type of olive wood. So I find this fascinating that here are two cherubim, uh, their wingspan guarding this Ark of Covenant. And later on, you talk about olive wood representing the Jews and the Gentiles. And here again, we have this looking forward of the inclusion of all of humanity uh, into your kingdom. It's just crazy, God. It just is amazing to me learning more and more and more about this book that you've given us and uncovering layers and layers of just love and grace and attention to us. I know, God, that not all of us will end up being your children. Not all who call upon the name of the Father will end up in heaven. I, I get that. But I just think it's glorious watching you work in the Old Testament to this coming Christ, your son in the New Testament. The one perfect person who is going to make it so that all of us can potentially be a part of your kingdom. Potentially all of us can have freedom. Potentially all of us can spend eternity with you. And I just, I love learning more about the Old Testament. And I find these cherubim absolutely fascinating. Um, watching over the Ark of the Covenant, the most holy of holy places that is referenced directly when Jesus dies on the cross and for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And the veil is torn, that veil that's in the Holy of Holies. Um, as it was put in Solomon's temple. God, thank you for showing us these things. Thank you for taking the filters off of our eyes and our hearts so that we can get into your word and we can learn more about it and we can be excited about it. And through it, our lives can be changed. In your son's name I pray. Amen.